how do other christian denomination view ordination sure so they don't and they will admit uh, the non-apostolic uh, christians they don't believe there's a priesthood at all so they don't believe that that's necessary and they will say that they're not priests because they don't believe in the priesthood. And they view ordination as just collective Bible teachers to put their hands on another person. And then he becomes one of them, too, like a, a pastor, as they would call it. Um, so one of the issues here is that where did they get this from? And when did it begin? So... The furthest they can go back really depends on which denomination they are. So some denominations yeah. began in the 1900s, some of them in the 1800s. So you can't really get further back than the 16th century. And that's like the, the oldest ones, you know. Uh, so there's no real authority there. It's just something that they do. And even if someone didn't do it, it probably is not a problem for them. So the view of a 2000 year old succession being mandatory at, and this is what actually the church is based on they don't have this concept at all well why they don't have it do you think it's from the translation of the bible itself um i think that they have made the translation to fit their rejection they don't base their rejection on the translation they base the translation on the rejection so for example, in when the writers are writing 2,000 years ago, the apostles, as we know, the apostles were Aramaic speakers. That's what, that was their first language. So when the apostle is writing, he's thinking Aramaic, writing in Greek. Um, so then when he's writing the words inspired by the Holy Spirit, at the same time, it's intended to be interpreted through the church. Therefore, the writer is not worried in his time about... Uh, things like in the, the Aramaic Semitic mind, saying words like kahna, or, and then writing it presbyteros in the Greek. And then he doesn't assume that 2,000 years later, there's going to be an issue about people will be saying pastor versus people will be saying priest. Because in his mind, it's the same. In the same way, the writers would say things like brothers of the Lord in the same mindset. So it wasn't something that they considered. Do you think even in the translation of the Protestant swans, they don't mention or they change the word? Like in Syriac, it's qashishu. It's a clear. Clear. Uh, like, is there the function still there? The sure, sure. And we see that again, like I mentioned in a previous episode, uh, Acts chapter 13, verse 2. The Greek word in Arabic, it says, yekhdemu. And in English, it says ministered. But in Greek, it says liturgied. They use liturgy as a verb. So it says, Paul and Barnabas performed the liturgy in the Greek. It's very clear. But how come it's lost in the English and in the Arabic? It's, I think, the modern translation for the Bible. Yeah. But it's still the function there for the priests and the bishops, even the deacons, too. It was clear. And as I know, they didn't have the problem and they didn't have the question about the priesthood that time because everyone were believing in it. As they do right. the Lord. The, in, in the ancient mindset, there is no option or possibility for no priesthood. There was, it didn't occur to them. Even the heretics didn't think like that. Mm -hmm. That's right. Then, Shamosha, do you think uh, it's okay to say to Abuna, uh, Abuna, like the priest, to call him father? Yes, yes, of course. Uh, the Lord is telling the disciples, do not call anyone father. Yeah, and again, uh, Obviously, he cannot be addressing us since at the time, nobody was calling clergy father. No one was calling the Jewish priest father in that time. So obviously, this is not what he's talking about. Since we see later, Peter is calling Mark his son. Paul is calling Timothy his son. John calls us all his children. So this is not the intention here. The intention is... Uh, he's trying to get people to understand that their teachers are hypocrites. The Jews are hypocrites. Uh, don't learn from them. Right, anyway. right. As uh, even St. Paul uh, tell in his letter that I make you born in Jesus. Mm. Yeah. Thank you, Shemoshu. Actually, it was a good one. Many questions we get about this.
And I encourage everyone to come to this path. If it's your call, it will bring a lot of joy, blessing to you and to your family. As one of the saints said, when one gives his life to the Lord, the Lord will come and live on behalf of him with his family. Also, he will take what in you and give it with the blessing of the Holy Spirit, the blessing of the Holy Ordination Sacrament to others around you. Because we're serving the Lord. We're presenting the Lord. The priest is representing the Lord. We're not serving ourselves. Come and serve the Lord. This is the great call to you. Think about it. Pray for it. If you have this call, just take this step. Pray and take the step with the guidance of the Holy Spirit. If you just feel it, it's good to go to the monastery to examine if this call is really from the Lord to you. If not, still you could serve the Lord in the church and the people of the church and everyone around you. May the Lord bless you all. Have a great day. Thank you.